Welcome back. Let's do a drawing of a still life today. I'm Christina Schertz, artist and artist educator. If you could bring together, here I am on my morning walk with my babies. If you could bring together a needed eraser, some nice drawing paper, extra sketchbook, a few pencils, 2B, 6B, 8B, and maybe a charcoal pencil. We should be all set. A blending stump also works well with this project. Start with an object from your life. Something besides your phone, maybe? I chose this little fake plant. It's a little succulent. You'll be also needing a ruler or a straight edge to find um, angles, do some siding techniques. If you want to sharpen your pencil and have it last a bit longer, you can use your razor to cut first your wood, to whittle the wood, and then edge away the graphite. You can make it at an angle, and the, your pencil will last longer than just putting it through a pencil sharpener. So, your paper, what shall you, shall you do? How shall you plan it? Go to a thumbnail drawing. Think about it. Do you want it to be horizontal? Do you want it to be vertical? Lay out your value contrast. So grab your sketchbook. And my thumbnail, I figured I would be doing it a horizontal orientation, but I started to break it down and actually added on more than I really needed to with the intention of this. Um, project you only need to draw fill in the value and shade one single object but I just you know got enthusiastic and ahead of myself and you'll see I went far ahead into the abyss I'm doing a rough sketch it's a nice practice to work out the scale and the proportions of the object start practicing my ellipses, see if I've been practicing them enough lately. Finding the darkest value first is my usual technique. So of course that will be at the edge of things or under the shadow of things. Identifying my light source, which is at this point behind the object. And here I start to find the orientation I I decide upon more of a square. My object is sitting on a book and I end up making that a primary part of my composition using the rule of thirds as I have text that goes into the primary areas. Overall, this other object is just centered but at the higher um, portion of my image. So I'm drawing the book underneath it. I end up keeping an aspect of the book and I have a horizon line in the final piece. So it's interesting what you start with, what you work with as you consider ideas, and what you actually keep. So I drew out my value contrast, but then I labeled them one through five. And I like to keep this drawing by me in case the image is changing with the light, which it really, really did. I can show you later or just to remind myself of what my aim was because I can get off track in just the enjoyment and frustrations of, of drawing and making things. Okay, so here's my object in its original illumination. This is it later in the evening. So there's a gradual shift. Here's a close-up view of the final piece that I made. I worked on it for about an hour and a half. Here's my setup, my paper, my object lit, and my thumbnail drawing. I label it drawing still life. And then I made little marks of the, the crossing points of the rule of thirds, just to help me map out, and I did these very, very light with a 2B pencil just to start to map out where I wanted to locate my object. Mapping it, really. 
and notice the different ways in which I hold my pencil. This is a, a loose way so that I can get particular angles without being too, um, if I hold it really close like a drawing writing instrument, instrument, then I won't be able to get those long lines or ellipses to be smooth. That's just for me. So I map out the ellipses as well. There's three of them. And then this angle here, I lift up my ruler. This is where I'm lifting the ruler to check on the object and bring it to my paper. You'll see that I bring my paper all the way down at an angle. For these most important angles, I'm trying to get it more precise. So how do you do that? You hold up an object, a straight edge, and you line it up, and then you keep your elbow straight, and you bring it to your paper. How do you check something that's symmetrical, that's man-made? Draw a line down the middle, like of a bottle. You can see my lips, it's a little off in the bottom lip. And to find those things out, Stand up and step 10 feet away from your image, and then you'll see it so clearly. So if you stay up close, you're going to miss out on something. And then I figured out, where's the widest point of the foliage, the plant? Where's the highest part? I don't want to go beyond those points because I know that it, it really only takes up that space. And then I take my charcoal and I ju just go straight into the darkest areas. It helps me map things out. So I'm going to look and at the very, very bottom. You know what I mean? thoughtful about it but this will likely get spread about so I'm not making it too precious and then I brought in my 2B pencil and I start figuring out where the closest of the plant is notice how I'm holding the pencil Still keep like a loose shape and then here when I want it to be more precise I change my handling of the pencil. I believe I have my arm resting on an armrest but you could put a piece of paper into your hand and now I'm looking at where are the areas of level four. Walking in those areas. And going beyond so that it blends a bit better all together. Thinking of my object and then coming back to the drawing over and over again, repeatedly, assessing different things, blending, thinking of the different planes, trying to get the values in. I started with the contour drawing. I didn't quite finish it. I wanted to start to get the values in before the other areas started to make more sense. And then I also bring in my eraser and take away. So use a reductive method to take away and make lighter. Still looking on the area level four areas. Adding on to the drawing because now the darkest areas are blocked in. Measuring them against each other, figuring out the value contrast, the major value contrast within each area, each plane. Here I'm using my eraser to take away. 
reminding myself of where the ellipse is. Measuring things against each other from one side to the other. And bringing in the value contrast after I bring in the shape. And then just reaffirming it over and over. This is still, even though we're doing some nice shading, this is still a pretty fast sketch. I'm not expecting you to do a five day drawing with shading where it would be ultimately blended. I'd rather you work larger and then it not be as gra gradiated from light, medium to dark quite as extremely. I also am trying to pay attention that I'm not just drawing an outline to each area, but that I am having definition. I'm trying to rely on value contrast to define er the difference between one overlap to the other, but not a line like a cartoon line all the way around. Finding the fives, level five again. And it's really just going back and forth, finding the drawing, adding in value, moving to another area, finding the drawing, measuring against what I just did, and then adding in the darker value that I can find at that spot. It's really just repeating that in a pattern. And I find that the more I move from one area to the other, I seem to have a, a looser, more cohesive drawing. There I was measuring. The height. And angle, siding techniques. Making sure overlaps follow one from one side to the other when it's behind something. And with this drawing, I worked front to back. The homemade dog was hitting the camera. Darkness, making sure I'm getting the angle of the curve. Because, you know, these plants, they hold wa a lot of water for themselves. So they have like a nice curvy roundness to them. Trying to find the starting point of things and at what angle they go. And this final oak area, it's, um, I didn't want it to be too detailed as it's further away from the eye. So I don't mind if it's lacking some detail. Usually things have less detail the further the way, further away they are from you. And they also have more value contrast the closer that they are to you. So I try to keep that in mind with this drawing as I know that that helps create an illusion. I'm using my eraser not only to lighten areas but to do some blending. I bring in the value from my thumbnail drawing that I had assessed of the background having a darker value. And I'm just loosely using my, I think, 6B across the background. One way and then the other. And then I drew right over the background um, parts so it'll blend into the background with the same, a similar texture and value. I'm using my blending stump. And I'm leaving the area of the plant just really for my own eyes. And then I come in at the angle to just Take away some of the white of the page that you can see through in the original drawing. And I'll go back and forth a bit to try to reduce that. 
the areas are darker, I'm just using my blending stump to pull in the dark. Eight B graphite. So I still am bringing in some line work, some drawing, just in some areas so that I can define. the background of the plant is getting a little bit darker. I wanted to make the foreground darker and the background a little bit darker so it's not jumping forward quite so much. Or at least it doesn't have as much stark contrast in the leaves. But you definitely want all five levels of value contrast, just like we make the value contrast scale. So this is about three-fourths done for this quick shading. Oh, that's still wet. So with this demonstration, just keep an eye at how I keep assessing the value and how I keep coming in with different kinds of shading, what kind of hold I'm doing on the drawing implement. And join me next time for some more. Keep on keeping on.
I stopped with this one. I felt like I got the form of the um, pot, the vessel, pretty well done. Uh, my ellipses were pretty good. The form of the, the shading actually in the leaves, I think turned out rather well. Could use maybe a little bit more level two. But overall, for a quick one and a half hour shading, it was fun, it was good. So now the sun is setting on this drawing adventure. I hope that you can join me again next time. Take care, keep making things, and show up and do the work. Thanks.